Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Boxing with TT and I want to say thank you to my viewers, my subscribers. I want to say thank you to the young men that allowed me to promote my channel on their Instagram page. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. My weekend is going to be awesome. My baby is going to Sesame Street for the first time. I might add up a little bit of here and there for y'all tomorrow so don't be alarmed if y'all see his little adventure on sesame place for the first time and we are going to talk about mr jack johnson <sighs> y'all know i have been dreading for this day to come you know i've been popping up you know just been patiently waiting to do him and today we're on mr jack johnson okay so jack johnson was born john arthur johnson okay and his birth Place is in Gallatin, Texas. He is born March the 31st, 1878 to parents Henry and Tina. Henry and Tina are former slaves, but they are no longer slaves anymore, honey. They are working um, with labor workers, okay? And um, John is, I'm going to call him John until the boxing thing, okay? So John is the third child of nine children. I mean, they was getting busy, okay? And um, at fifth, on a fifth grade level of education, Jack, John decides to leave um, school to help mom and dad, you know, take care of the other siblings as well, okay? Which just shows how much responsibility that he was willing to, um, to take on. He's, he's, he's still a kid and he wants to help mom and dad out. So yeah, let's get it. Um, so Jack leaves school to support his family. And then uh, as a young child, he participates and he goes to summer boxing league. So he already in his mind already knew that he wanted to be a boxer. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing that nobody can say to him. He already knew in his mind that's what he was going to do. And he also had a little reputation um, for actually fighting a little bit here and there, whatever, not nothing too crazy. Um, so at the age of 16, Jack moves to New York with a famous boxer. He's a West Indian man and he's in the middle class. All right. And he decides that he wants to work with horses. He is to train the horses, but honey, they stated that he trained them so bad that he exhausted them poor little horses. And he got fired, honey, because he was just wearing them horses right on out. So he goes back home and he decides now he wants to take up janitor work because this man is a jack of all trades. There's really much nothing that he does not do to keep the income coming in for his family at this time. Well, later on in the future as well. So he decides to go back into um, back home and he does genital work and while he's doing genital work the owner that he does genital work is not an ordinary man he is also a boxer and his name is herman Ballard, and he is a heavyweight in his bracket okay so it seems like this might have just been his calling because what a coincidence he works with he knows and he works with two prior boxers okay and um, he actually began sparring. And then when he started sparring, he still was working different odd jobs. Okay. So we understand that boxing is his baby because he's been doing this since, <laughs> since he was about 16 years old. So at 1898, Jack is 20 years old. And Jack um, begins his reign winning the Texas State middleweight title okay so this is where it started for him at the age of 10 to, uh, 10 to 20 year old he spars with joe kaponski and this is when joe gives him a chance okay but prior to this um the men they they are sparring and um the troops come in and they stop it because in Texas, this is still illegal. Certain places are comfortable with it. Certain places aren't comfortable with it. And Texas is one of the places that is not comfortable with boxing, okay? Um, and it's a couple of other things that they're not comfortable with as well. Well, the world wasn't comfortable with as well either at this time frame. But we're going to get into that a little bit more on later. So while they're 
um, trying to do this match, they get in trouble and they have a bell set on some for $5,000. Either men have $5,000, so they spend 23 days in jail. While they're spending 23 days in jail, they build a, a, um, a relationship, a friendship, okay? Now, before y'all go ahead and y'all start judging, there was no racism in Mr. Jack or John's eyes. When he was younger, his friends were Caucasian. He hung around them a lot. A lot of, it wasn't no white, no black to him, okay? So I'm just going to put that out there right here, right now. His mother and dad did not raise him to be prejudiced. He was not a prejudiced man. His majority of his friends were white men, okay? So as they become friends, Jack learns a lot of things from Mr. Joe. He learns the techniques that Joe has, and he also learns some great skills from Joe as well, okay? So in 1901, Jack understands that Texas law is not to box. So he leaves. He leaves to pursue his career. And at 1903, this is his first title win against Mr. Ed Martin. I'm sorry about the mic, the, 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 the thing in the back. Sorry about that. Um, but this is his first title win with Mr. Ed Martin. At 1906, he becomes a contender for the World Championship. At 1908, Jack is Mr. Tommy Brown's sparring partner. Mr. Tommy is impressed with his work, okay? And he is like, yeah, if you want a title match, I'll give you the title match. Another person who is not... um. He doesn't care about color. He sees a talented young man, and he is willing to give this talented young man a chance to win the title, and that's what he does. And we already talked about all the backlash that Mr. Tommy Burns faced when he did this, okay? And um, at 1908, once again, Jack is his sparring partner, and then he turns into his opponent, and then that same year, he wins the belt, and this makes him the first African-American champion, okay? So he is the first, the first in 1908, the American champion, okay? Um, and the belt that he won prior to that was the colored champion, okay? So now he has two belts on his resume, the colored champion and the world champ. And he is defeated um, until 1915, and honestly, he did a dang one good job because he defended that title 17 times and did not lose it, not one time, okay? So now, we have to add some controversy into this, because y'all know, the story we ain't a story without no controversy, right? So, Johnson decides for a few years that he is not going to fight African Americans for right now why he is a champion and he states that he decided to not fight african americans because the white people was where the money resided at okay and um johnson was states that this is where the real money was at and then you have another boxer mr Jeanette. he's black as well and he stated that he just drew a straight color line on the black people he just didn't want to give black folks the opportunity to um, to gain the, to get, to get the, to get the belt from him. And it's also stated that he tried to charge Mr. Sam, uh, Mr. Sam Langford $3,000, which was supposed to be a guaranteed that Mr. Sam would come. Okay. I'm going to give y'all my opinion on that later. Right. So, um, later on, he is jailed for kidnapping his girlfriend um, uh, for crossing the state line, okay? And then he goes on to marry three women, and it stated that he never dated a black woman after the first black woman broke his heart. He stated that he, he basically vowed to himself that he never wanted to date another black woman again, and this was basically due to his heart being broke from a black woman. So he decided to go home and deal with the white the white girls or whatever the case may be. And um, that caused a lot of problems in his life, but we're getting to that again later on, okay? My opinion later on, all right? And so um, 
the blacks didn't really appreciate what he was doing um pretty much dabbling with the white females they they just wasn't off it at all um but they appreciated what he did in that ring okay so what he did in that ring and his personal life was two different things so the blacks loved him in the ring because of what he represented and he also um was very successful okay the only problem was that he liked the white women okay that was a big no no it was no such thing as interracial dating at this time so that was a absolutely no for not just the white community but also for the black community as well okay and mr jack just didn't care <laughs> he didn't care who felt what kind of ways if he fell in love with them he was going to marry them and that was nothing that nobody was going to do about it um so with this being said this actually overshadows his career um yeah it overshadows his career um yes you are that guy in the ring but you're also sleeping with white women you're also marrying white women so what happens is if it got so bad y'all that after he stopped boxing he tries to work with mr joe lewis young joe lewis joe lewis people was like absolutely not joe lewis is like yeah no sir i can't i can't work with you and um it stated that it put a big really big black dark shadow over the up-and-coming black boxers because they was the african-american community was like just don't do what he did okay don't, don't do that okay and so you know you had to make the people happy you know um and the the fight of the century but i'm not going to get into because we already spoke about the fight of the century um it causes what i said prior in the other video a mega mega riot okay and it was to the point where it causes a riot so freaking bad that there was 20 murders 20 murders okay and then it was over a hundred black people injured in 25 states over 50 cities so this riot of the great white hope it was not good it was not a great time to be um mr joe or for you to be black period because like i said this caused a lot of problems um a lot of assaults a lot of brutal violence for no reason like i said he never looked at it as the white man is bigger than me or i'm bigger than a white man he just looked at life as life okay so in November 1st, um, 1897, he defends Mr. Charlie Brooks. And this is his first debut match. I'm sorry, probably I'm going to jump into his boxing career, okay? So he defends, his, his first defense was November 1st, 1897 against uh, Charlie Brooks. And then November 20th, 1897, he defeats Mr. Ed Johnson. July... July 24th, 1898, he defeats a guy named Cherokee. May 6th, 1899, he loses for the first time to Klondike Haynes. May 21st, 1900, he is um, scheduled to compete against Mr. Jim Mc McCormick, but it's um, it doesn't happen. He then, in April 9th of 1900, um, is scheduled to compete against William McNeil. This match does not happen as well. April 20th, 1900, he does um, go into a match with Mr. Jim McCormick, and he wins this time, okay? And then uh, um, June 25th, 1900, there is a draw against Kondak Haynes. December 27th, 1900, he defeats Kondak Haynes. April 28th, 1931, he wins against Brad Simmons, which is his last match. And y'all know how I do. I'm only going to give y'all 10 because I know y'all got stuff to do. Okay? So, in February the 5th, 1903, this is when he won the colored heavyweight title against Mr. Ed Martin. Okay? 
And then in December 26, 1908, this is when he wins the World Heavyweight Champion title against Mr. Tommy Burns. April 5th, 1915 is when he loses his belt to Mr. Jesse Wilford, okay? So now we're going to jump back into his personal life real quick. Because, like I said, his boxing, his life, his his personal life overshadows his boxing career, okay? So, um, he lives a lavish lifestyle, okay? He is spending money like it's not going, like it's not going out of style, okay? It's stated that he wore, he would change his clothes two times a day. <laughs> and this man loved cars. He would buy the most you know, the most fanciest car that they had available. Um, and he, um, in 1912, him and his wife actually opened up a club, a nightclub, and they also opened up a restaurant. And they stated that he sold the restaurant to a gangster while living in New York. I guess he must have needed the money or whatever the case may be, or it wasn't popping off. I'm not sure. But um, in 1911, he marries Edna Terry DeRay in Brooklyn. In 1912, Miss Edna has depression and it draws her to commit. Now, in the previous book that I had read, they had stated that he, yes, she did have depression, but with him cheating on her and him never being there all the time, she actually wrote him basically a Dear John letter. Well, a Dear Jack letter. Well, <laughs> a Dear John letter. And basically was telling him, like, you know, the absence of you, my love, is really, like, making me really depressed. Um, and she basically just couldn't take it anymore. I didn't read that he was cheating on her. But from what I, um, I gathered, it just was stating that she was tired of being alone. And that she wanted that comfort of a husband. And he couldn't give it to her because of his busy schedule. Now, not only did I read it, but guess who else read it? The boys in blue. Mm -hmm. They got the letter too. So, you know, they had to try to get him with something. They tried to charge him with feeling guilty of that right there. Because if she wasn't with this Negro, she would have been fine. Okay. But depression does not fall off of who, who you're in love with. If you have a mental illness, then you just have a mental illness. There's pretty much nothing that no one can do about it. I don't care what color they are. Okay. So, um... Before he married her, Edna's mother, which would make him his mother-in-law, charged him for kidnap. Uh, yeah, she called them up and was like, he kidnapped my baby. And they're like, oh, okay, well, what's going on? And he's black. And he, he took my daughter across the state line. Yeah, that's a kidnap charge. So, this is how the man act came into play, okay? So, um, and nothing ever happened because once again, Miss Etna committed suicide. Okay. So now after she passes away, Mr. Jack moved on pretty freaking fast because, and right after she passed away, I'm not sure how long afterward, but honey, he had him a whole brand new white woman, a whole brand new wife. And this wife, this wife <laughs> name was Lucille. Carmen and Lucille Carmen stayed married to him until 1924. And she divorces him after strenuous affairs, pretty much. Okay. Um, Miss Mom, Miss Mama's couldn't take it no more. His mama says, You got me messed up. I, I can't keep living like this, sir. I'm out of here. And she left this behind, uh, right where the hell he stood at. Okay. The minks and all the fancy cars, the gold teeth. It didn't mean nothing to him because it didn't mean nothing to her because she was tired of, you know, being cheated on. No woman wants to be cheated on. It doesn't really matter, you know, what you do for them financially. Every woman wants that loyalty and that secure of, yes, I know you're going to take care of me, but can you stop cheating on me? No? Okay, I'm out. But we got to go back to 1913. Because May 13th, 1913, some little chick named Belly Scruba leads to Mr. Jack Johnson's man act. So I don't know what was going on with Mr. Johnson. They said that he liked the prosecutors, a.k.a. prostitutions. 
Okay. So I'm not sure whom this lady was, what he was doing with this woman, because he was supposed to be married to Edna. 1913? Yeah, no. You was married to Edna. Edna committed suicide, and then you married Mrs. Um, Mrs. Carmen. So technically, you was married to Miss Lucille, but you had this younger Miss Belly in your vehicle crossing state lines because this is what this was all about. All this was about crossing state lines. If you cross the state line with a person that wasn't your race, you was charged for the man act. Okay, it didn't matter how old they was; they didn't care. All right. So, um, he goes on a run for, I believe, seven years or several years with his wife, Lucille. And then he dresses as a baseball player, which was a freaking brilliant idea in my brain cell because it's like a baseball player who will actually, <laughs> yeah, a baseball player would probably be the, 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 the safest cover up. Okay. So he, um, he dresses as a baseball player. And then in 1914, he decides, I'm going to continue on living my life. I'm not going to keep hiding his, from these people. So in 1914, he writes two memoirs. One is in French and one is called Mes Combates. I believe, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Sorry if I put you there. Um, and then the couple flees to Canada. They feed the Europe. And he feeds to Cuba. Um, and he does defend his titles while he is uh, on the run, honey. <laughs> he can't listen. Man still got to eat. Man still got things that he got to do. Okay. So in 1920, he makes his return back to the United States of America. And when he makes his return, he surrenders. Okay. He surrenders. He goes to the U.S. Marshals. He's like, what's up? Here I am. Well, I'm, the man is right here. Like, what's up? He does do his time. And when he does his time, he doesn't stop boxing. He continues to box. And with him continuing on boxing, he is so now he's fighting in the federal precinct in um, Lever, Leavenworth, Kansas. Okay. And um, it stated that he could see you on boxing. And uh, he got this brilliant idea that if he lost a match, maybe, you know, they could surrender him or whatever the case may be. You know, you're black, you're dating white women, you're taking them across the state. Yeah, no, that's not about to happen. Okay. So then he decides he still has to make some money. So he starts making appearances in movies. He decides that he wants to be a bull. Fighter, <laughs> that cracked me up. He wants to be a ball fighter, and he also weapons, weapons. He wrestles, and then he opens up an agency, an agency called the Info. Um, I'm not sure what happened with this agency. I think it got closed down or shut down for whatever reason. But I really couldn't. Um, I can't really give you no details on that, so I won't sugarcoat or make nothing up. Okay. So in 1925. He remarries for the third time. And this time he marries Miss Irene Penro until death. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, Miss um Miss Carmen, she dumped his behind because he was just he just wanted to stay faithful. So she dumped him and then he married Miss Um Irene. And then um they stayed together until um his death. And he is the first modern athlete to um to be gained on celebrity celebrity status okay and then he spends he also spent the 23 days in jail for illegally fighting in 1946 june 10th um at the age of 68 jack passes away in raleigh north carolina from a car accident now, what they say is, is that this car accident took place because him and a, uh, him and a police officer got into a heated exchange. And he was so furious that he, he wrecked his car, um, after this altercation with the police. So I'm not sure exactly what the conversation was in the bar, um, 
with or what the police said to him that made him so irate because he they stated that he stormed out the club and when he stormed out the club he got upset and this is why people are not supposed to drive when they are upset or irate because anything can happen when you're upset like that you're not really you know thinking or nothing like that you're just trying to get away from the scene to you know stop yourself from doing anything or anything stupid and i think that's what it was he was probably trying to stop himself from saying anything or doing anything to get him in trouble because he is the most hated man in America because he has been married three times to three white women. The first woman committed suicide. The second one dumped you because you committed fidelity. Okay. So yeah, no, they ain't really rocking with you like that. Okay. So we're going to get into his accolades and um, he boxes and so he is 50 years old yeah he boxed until he was 50 and um he also started doing expedition matches and the expedition matches wasn't until like late 1945s so yeah he 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 definitely wasn't bull crapping around so in 1954 he is inducted into boxing hall of fame okay and then in 1917, a play comes out basically based on him by Mr. Howard Slacker, okay? And then uh, um, in 1970, The Great, uh, The Great, James Earl Jones plays Jack Johnson in The Great White Hope documentary and this documentary is just based on the personal life the lavish life that he had um but the outcome is totally different this outcome in the play it just um sorry this outcome in this play it basically um shows him not being jailed he's able to fight and he's able to gain back uh basically what he was losing his life okay um and then in 19 well i already told you guys about the 1912 that he opened up a restaurant with his wife um this is the restaurant he opened up with i believe miss edna and the own the nightclub as well okay and then in 2004 the documentary unforgivable blackness comes out it is on youtube go watch it go check it out okay um, and then in 2016, the president, Barack Obama, yeah, I said it with a smile, so what? Don't judge me. Barack Obama tries to overturn the wrongdoing of uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Nothing happened, of course, because whatever. I'm not going to get into politics. TT don't do that. <laughs> we leave politics to the politics people. But Ms. TT don't do that right there, okay? So then... In 2017, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, he also tries to join his colleagues for the Man Act crime. So Mr. Booker tries also to help him get out of the situation. Even though he is long gone, this man is still, he is still held under the Man Act law. And they're like, it's 2000 and something. Like, why is he still being punished for this? So they try to get him pardoned from there, okay? Um, and then in 2018, Mr. Donald Trump, president at the time, he considers a full uh, uh pardon due to Sylvester Stallone speaking for well, on the behalf of Mr. Jack Johnson, okay? Now, y'all know Sylvester Stallone, you, you know the Rocky movies, and you know that he's a really big fan of boxing, okay? So, Mr. Stallone brought it up like, you know, that was kind of messed up, but they did to him, and, you know, he he ran it by the right person. He ran it by Mr. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, at the time being president, was like, you know what? We're going to give that guy a pardon. <laughs> If he like white stuff, he just like white stuff. Like it's just what it was, what it was. Okay. And um on May 28th, 2018, Mr. Donald Trump granted him that pardon. Okay. So he is clear of all charges. Whatever happened, happened, and that's just is what it is, folks. Okay. 
So that is the life of Mr. Jack Johnson, all right? Now, how I feel about Mr. Jack Johnson, this video is going to be a little long, I'm sorry, y'all. But how I feel about Mr. Jack Johnson, personally, I see he didn't do anything wrong. Okay, I feel do I do feel a little a little a little, a little a little funny about him not really giving blacks the opportunity to box with him for five years, um, because it's stated that he lost once he did start boxing black people again. He was losing to these black people, um, which he doesn't have a lot of losses. I think it's like twelve. I'm sorry, y'all. I think he had ninety three total fights. Um, I think 73 was knockouts. I think he had 13 losses. I think he had three um, indies or no decisions, okay? So he didn't have a terrible record, okay? And maybe he did, maybe he was a little scared to fight the black folks. Or maybe he did feel as though white people made him more money. From the century of the, the, the fight of the century, he received $65,000, yeah, so he was definitely getting more. They said that he, this man earned, I believe, over $200,000, I think. No, he didn't save a dime of it, but I think he earned up to $200,000 during his career. So a majority of that money was made off of white people. But once again, he didn't care about the color. He wasn't a colorist. He, he didn't care whom he befriended because like i said in the early beginning his friends was white okay and i don't know how to feel about the this some at, at this point i don't know how to feel about it maybe he felt as though he was part of them because or maybe he felt as though he could date white women because he be friends with white people and nobody never had a problem with that so it was like okay maybe i could date a white woman because I, i'm friends with white people I'm not sure. So, yeah, like I was saying, I'm not sure if maybe or maybe he just had one of the moments of. I don't want no controversy against the white people because the white people was the people that's paying me. But that would be kind of stupid because you still had controversy because you was dating any women. Now, how I feel about the hum day and white women, Psh, whatever, I don't care, like. If that's what makes you happy, sir, live your best freaking life. But at that time, that was an absolutely freaking no-no. Like, people was getting lynched just because they, quote-unquote, looked at a white woman or because they stared at a white woman. People was getting lynched. So, I can understand the uproar and the outrage that African Americans was feeling at that time because it's like, you do know what's going on with dating white women. You do know that our men is being lynched for quote unquote whistling or eye goggling or googling eye in a white woman and you go ahead and you want to marry them. But once again, that man didn't see no color. Only color that Mr. Jackson seen was green. Okay? That's it, and that's all folks. That's all he seen was green. That's the only thing that made sense in his dang on brain cell, all right? And um yeah, I I can't tell you who to date and who not to date. And if mama and daddy ain't had nothing to say about it, then who the heck is us to say something about it, all right? But as far as his boxing career, his boxing, <laughs> forget about it. And yeah, y'all heard me say a gold tooth, because yeah, the man was wearing gold teeth back in 1945 or 1930s. He was doing the gold teeth thing, okay? He... He was a celebrity. Um, it stated that people would, you know, go crazy, especially the black community, will go crazy over Jack Johnson. Like, they will lose their ch because Jack Johnson was that guy. He wore minks. He, he wore, he drove lavish cars and diamond rings, and he did that. That's what Mr. Jack did, okay? That's just what he did, and he did it very freaking well, all right? So, in my opinion, honey... He lived his life to the fullest with no cares. Like I said, my man daddy had, ain't, ain't had nothing to worry about. My man daddy wasn't tripping on it, so he probably felt his little head. If my parents ain't tripping off of it, I ain't tripping off it neither. And shoot, maybe he he was already grown. Like, he was... At, night, at 16, he was taking care of his family. So, 
who are you? Who is anybody to tell me anything? Because I make sure that this this house got get what it need to get at the end of the day. So if I want to live a lavish lifestyle, if I want to spend my money the way I want to spend my money, you or no one else can tell me otherwise. And he was he he was hated because he was a free black man, and they couldn't take it. They couldn't take that this Negro was so, so unafraid to love who he wanted to love and to be who he wanted to be. See, prior people were so um, private, you know. Even, um, what's my man's name? Oh, I can't think about it, honey. I've been sipping on some gala. I can't think of the man's name. But even uh, one of the boxes that did uh, marry him, a white woman, and uh, that was telling the other guy, not to date white women. He had a lavish lifestyle too, but Mr. Jack, Mr. Jack popped out on a whole different type of timeline. A whole different timeline. This man was driving in whatever cars was out back then. Whatever popping cars was out back then, that's what this man was driving in. So, yeah, they, they just couldn't take it. <laughs> he was before his time. He was supposed to be born. He was supposed to be born back then. That's what that does. He was not supposed to be born back then. He was supposed to be born when um, uh, what is it called? In 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 racial when in racial dating was um going on. He wasn't. He was born way too soon because he was moving like everything was cool and no, it wasn't cool. But he did not care. It's just simple as that. He lived his life to the fullest, and I'm pretty sure that Mr. Jack Johnson has no regrets. Yes, he spent a little bit of time behind bars, but evidently that didn't. Oh, this thing is crooked, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. But evidently that didn't phase him. It didn't bother him because he still went on and married him another, another white woman. So obviously, um, that didn't bother him. It didn't accept, uh, affect him in no way. And he still was getting money. So even though that child did not like him because he was dating white women and he was